greetings to you all, oh, my wonderful dear friend, brothers and sisters, eh, those the ones who are there for home and the ones who are there in the diaspora. That's a very important message you where well, I can come for my people. This uh, uh, midday, let me call it a midday, Saturday midday. And it is weekend with day so. And today happens to be the seventh day in the month of September in the year of 2024. Um, let me read the headlines we have here. Then uh, I will then drop my own um, um, what I think concerning these messages. Because maybe someone might think now or maybe ask in the comment section how does this message lead to the beer France? But I will tell you when I come back. Insecurity. No politician funding bandits. They are fighting due to long-term neglect. Sheikh Gumi. Why police invited NLC president, secretary, and secretary? Again, Femi Falana. Fuel scarcity. Jonathan Buhari. Administration much better. Nigeria Labor Congress. NEF fund disburses student loans to 40 additional institutions. Tunumbu says, postman, Adjuri Ngelele. He don't say, you know, they do again. He say, the corruption, where they for this government, say, it did too much. Say, he don't want to be part of this government, where they collect nothing but abuses and threats, and also uh, causes every day by day. The guy say, uh, in fact, he talk say, he don't hear strange voices. The Nigerian people and the spirit of the ones where don't they come because of the hardship in this country say it they torment him while in Asorog. Ruben Abiati complained at the same thing during the Gulo Jonathan's regime that in Asorog, people who are staying there, if you are not spiritually inclined, my dear, you are going to be hearing strange voices. In other words, Asorog and the people who are ruling us. Are marching on the head of innocent uh, innocent Nigerians on daily basis. Anyway, if you get this message, like, share, comment, and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos coming your way. Okay, let me tell you the piece of my mind how the whole of this news relates to the Biafrans. One, insecurity, no politician funding bandits. They are fighting due to long term neglect. Sheikh Gumbe. Is there any southeasterner that will come out now and stand on his feet and say that that the Biafrans, the IPOPs, the ESN, the Biafran Liberation Army, they are not fighting against the government, but they are fighting to defend their own people? Can they be proud to say that? Can they be proud to make this comment that this guy has been making all along since the time of Buhari, where he said, that the bandits cannot be killed because they are their full soldiers. This same man came out the other day. He made another statement. That he told them not to radicalize the bandit now that they have seen the result. In other words, the bandit is being in communication with him. Anything, any state that the government tells that is not good, they will seek for this man's advice. As a controversial cleric, and he give them advice on how to operate. Can any South Easterner or South South make this comment and still remain in his house? This is the more reason why Biafra must go. Whether you like it or not, this statement alone can destroy the whole of the South East. If any prominent South Easterner, whether a governor, a chieftaincy holder, uh, Igwe, Obi, Eze, as long as you are a prominent in the society, in the southeastern and made this kind of comment, my dear, you will regret ever being born in this country. Another one. Why police invited NLC president and secretary again? Let me break your bubbles. NLC president Joe Ajero is an Igbo man from Imbo State. NLC secretary, somebody Odwara, what did they call him? Let me let me call his name so that you people will know why they are hunting these two guys. Emmanuel. Obaja is also an Igbo man. You know the reason why we are not wanted in the zoo? And as I don't see the reason why, according to them, why an Igbo man, a Biafran, should hold a strategic position 
and the Zojurian government. That is why they are fighting to demote or to cripple a, a Joe Ajero, the NLC president. Do you know why? What do they call him? Um, uh, MFL is suffering today. Not because he squandered money, but because he have a link to the Biafrans. His lineage, MFL, goes with MFL, eh? is from Biafra, his lineage. They know it. That is why he's suffering. The same time they arrested MFL, the same time they arrested ESCC former boss, Bawa, if you people can remember. Where is Bawa today? Bawa has been released. Where is Abba Kiare? Abba Kiare has been released. But MFL has been struck of everything he labeled for, but they are still holding him. The same way they are holding Mazen Namdekano. And tomorrow, you will come out and tell me that this news does not relate to the, the Biafrans, the way we are fighting to get our freedom. That means it's either your brain is congealed or you have empty skull. Because this is the kind of news that you and I need to be hearing. Not anything, everything about what the Biafra said or what Simon Ekpa said or what Mazen Namdekano said in detention or what the IPOP Nigeria and DOS or whatever GOS said. This is the kind of news you're supposed to be listening. When you hear it, then use your own initiative, your own mindset to digest it. Then you know that me and you does not belong to the zoo. Because anybody who is not with them in that zoo must surely be taken out of the way. That is why Joe Ajero and Emmanuel Uwaja is being invited so many times. Any small thing, they will charge you for treason. <laughs> The lawyers in Nigeria don't know the meaning of treason. All the whole lawyers, even including their judges, they don't know anything about treason. People who went out there to protest, it's a treasonable felony. If you open mouth and close, they charge you for treason. If you do your work as a, as a journalist, they charge you for treason. Because they don't know the meaning. In fact, they have even misused that word. The Oibo that brought that word begin to regret. Why do we make this word known to the Zojurians? Let us go straight to the reason why we are here. Don't say I don't talk too much. I don't try to let you know that this news have everything to do with we, the Bia France. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. There's no time to tell time. She Gumi know the where the bandits are. But look at them. Nobody can arrest him. Because he comes from the section of the of the country who feel that the country belongs to them. A prominent Islamic clinic from Kaduna State, Sheikh Ahmed Gumi has refuted the claims. The politicians are funding the ongoing unrest in the northern Nigeria, particularly in the northwest region, where insecurity has worsened in recent years. Despite numerous attacks by bandits and other criminal elements, including the killing of the monarch of Gobiri in Sokoto State, Gumi insists that the political involvement is not to blame. <laughs> it's not to blame. <laughs> Back in 2021, Imo State Governor Hopeless Sisodimba Dimba alleged that politicians were behind banditry sweeping parts of the country. However, in an interview with the Saturday Punch, Gumi dismissed these allegations as baseless and lacking intelligence. The cleric said, This is an unintelligent allegation. No politician is sponsoring these people. We are all victims. The opposition is not even behind this. This is a natural reaction of people neglected for centuries without education. Knowing fully well that these people who are bandits in the northeast, northwest, and north central are not Nigerians, they tell me how are they being neglected? These are the imported bandits by Rufai, sorry, A Rufai, and the likes of uh, uh, what they call him, um, Ganduje. And all the southeast state governors, all the northeast, northwest, and north central governors, they know about all these bandits. Buhari know about, about them. They are not Nigerians. Belo Tunji is from Niger. But he is in Nigeria, threatening the military that they are not afraid, afraid to die. Yet, this controversial cleric with an empty skull is here telling us another different story. Use your tongue to count your teeth. That Nigeria or Zogeria, whatever you choose to call them, is gone and gone forever and can never be revived. Tunumbu can never do anything. Now they are exposed to the world and they want education. These people are exposed 
to the internet and they see how much they are deprived. They want to fight back. This act is not by anybody. Gumi also highlighted the growing desire for education and a better future among the affected communities. We went to, we went to a village between Abuja and Kaduna and uh, we built schools for herdsmen to our surprise. Over 600 of them with their families have started schooling there. They told us that they do not want their children to be like them. Imagine if we did that all around the country. He said, all around the country. How can you do it all around the country? Is it all around the country that we have herdsmen? You want to force the herdsmen to all around the country because you want to dominate the whole country. Shegumi, your time is ticking. Why police invited NLC president, secretary again, Femi Falano. New details are surfaced on why, on surface on why the, the president of the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC Joe Ajeru and the NLC Secretary General uh, Emmanuel uh, Ubaja were re invited by the Nigerian police force after all initial summons. Nigerian news recorded that uh, Ajeru was initially invited over allegations involving criminal conspiracy, terrorism financing, treasonable felonies, subversion, and cyber crime. Following Ajero's first appearance on August 29, the police, in another letter signed by the Commissioner of Police, Operation Ibitoye Alajide, on behalf of the Deputy Inspector General of Police, Force Intelligence Department Abuja, asked him to appear again on Thursday, September 5, alongside the NLC General Secretary, to answer questions over alleged criminal intimidation, conduct likely to cause a breach of public peace and malicious damage to property. <laughs> The letter also provided a contact number for further coordination and emphasized the need for cooperation. After the initial meeting at the force headquarters in Abuja, Ajeru, uh, who was uh, accompanied by NLC Legal Council, Femi Falana, SAN, affirmed that the NLC would maintain its patriotic stance despite the challenges. However, source indicated that recent invitation stemmed from a petition filed by a private company unrelated to the previous allegations of terrorism financing which had been resolved. A source close to the matter explained that the matter of terrorism financing had been concluded. The invitation was based on a fresh petition by a company over what they touched as disruptions. Confirming the development to the point corresponding the NLC Council, Falana, said a few months ago a private company lodged a complaint against the leadership of the NLC in a report sorry in respect of the picketing uh, picketing of uh, east premises by workers the complainants against comrade joe ajero are limited to criminal intimidation conduct likely to cause a breach of the peace and malicious damage to properties they are doing everything humanly possible to to find a way to uh, humiliate this guy out of office. For scarcity, or rather the cry, Jonathan and Buhari's administration, much better. NLC. The spokesperson of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Benson Opa, has condemned the approach of Bola Me Tunumbu to the removal of fuel subsidy. According to Opa, Tunumbu, while announcing the removal of a fuel subsidy, did not think of what will be the consequences effects of this policy pronouncement. Opa, in an interview with the Weekend Trust, noted that the administration of former President Gulo Jonathan and Muhammad Buhari are much better than the current administration. I told my people that people must surely, I mean the Zodurians must surely miss Buhari and they said na lie, it have happening. He noted that some would say Buhari was the worst. However, he was very accommodating adding that he did, he did everything humanly possible to ensure that life was stable and good. The NLC spokesman also compared the exchange rate during the Jonathan administration and the current government. Speaking on the situation in the country, Opa said, I keep telling people who say Buhari was, was the worst, that they are joking. For us at Labour, we found Buhari very accommodating and innocent. He did everything humanly possible to ensure that life was stable, stable and good. When he came in, 
He gave money to the state to pay the backlog of salaries and pensions, but it was diverted. He made other interventions to avoid the insane increases. If you ask those, uh, those same people now, they will tell you that Buhari administration was very good. We are talking about less than two years ago before Buhari came. It was Jonathan. We said Jonathan had messed up this country, but now look at the indices and compare the exchange rate, the interest rate, the debt. So we are in a situation where we are progressively getting worse. OPA said that this amid first scarcity and hike in price of petrol across the country. NEF fund disburses student loans to 40 additional institutions, excluding the Southeast. Nigerian Education uh, Loan Fund announces on Friday that it, is, uh, it has uh, successfully disbursed student loans to 40 additional institutions, bringing the total disbursement to institutions uh, to 59. NEF fund in a statement posted on its uh, X platform appreciated expansion being recorded in his intervention. It said the expansion marks a significant milestone in his ongoing commitment to providing access to quality education for all Nigerian students, regardless of their financial circumstances. Managing Director of NEFON, Mr. Akin Tunde uh, Soya, had uh, explained that NEFON initiative has been empowered to reach every corner of the country, ensuring that no student is marginalized. He emphasized the importance of institutions to achieve, uh, to sorry, actively participate in the loan scheme by submitting student data promptly and accurately to ensure seamless loan disbursement. The last but not the least, Tunumbu's spokesman, Adore Ngelele, steps down. Our Julie Ingele, special advisor to the President of Media and Publicity, has announced his decision to take an indefinite leave of absence from his official duties. This was made known in a memo submitted to the Chief of Staff to the President Femi Badabia Miller on Friday. In his statement, Ingele cited pressing medical issues affecting his immediate family as the primary reason for his decision. This agonizing decision was taken after significant consultations with my family over the past several days, as a vexations, so as a vexatious medical situation has worsened at home, Ngalele explained. The leave of absence will impact Ngalele's multiple roles within the administration. In addition to his uh, position as uh, presidential spokesperson, Ngalele will also temporarily step away from his duties as special presidential envoy on climate action and the chairman of the presidential steering committee on project evergreen while i fully appreciated that the ship of state was for no man this agonizing decision was taken after significant consultations with uh, my family over the past several days ngalale stated <laughs> ngalale say he don't tire to the receive calls every time because everything, where they tell that, that uh, so called uh, Julian na cause, cause and cause and cause and cause. Anyway, my people, now you can take back break. Please like, share, comment, and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos coming your way. My name is Amanda Amandia Neze. Important life from the platform of Okute Daily Talk. I'll be right back. Have a nice day and bye for now, my people. Kemesiano.